Attacks on foreign-owned shops in townships are all too common in South Africa, especially during service delivery protests. The shops are often looted and the shopkeepers injured or killed if they're not driven out of town. This is one of the topics under discussion at the Urban Informality and Migrant Entrepreneurship Conference in Cape Town this week. Professor Jonathan Crush is an expert on xenophobia and he joins us in the Newsday studio this afternoon. Prof, good afternoon to you. Why are these migrant entrepreneurs so often a target? They are perceived in, uh, as a threat. Um, they are often um, regarded as undermining South African businesses. And they are seen as being culturally different. I mean, the issue, though, is whether responses to them are motivated by business competition, by criminality, or by some kind of more sort of demonizing stereotyping through xenophobia. How do we know what's going on? Because I mean, all too often we put the label of xenophobia to this, where sometimes it's actually just a case of economic jealousy. No, you're right. And, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that we've grappled with. And what we try to do is to say, well, we've got to start with an evidence base uh, and have a look at what the attitudes of South Africans in general, and in particular communities, actually are. So we developed various survey instruments. We do, every two or three years, a national uh, survey on South African attitudes to immigrants, um, migrants, refugees, uh, policy. And from that, we can get a very good sense of levels of xenophobia, what's driving it, and where it's particularly intense amongst which, which population groups. You say you're doing the study on a regular basis. Are we seeing an increasing trend? We see some. Uh, we, saw, we saw a great intensification of hostility towards foreigners between about 1999 and 2006. Uh, we did the survey again in 2010. That's the most recent. And there is a, actually, by global standards, um, hostility is still very strong. But there is a slight lessening on most indicators since. Uh, 2006, which is a positive sign. Um, and one of the positive, I think the most positive sign is when, when you say, well, why has that actually happened? Um, one of the reasons we find is that xenophobia levels actually decline the more interaction South Africans have with foreigners, which might sound counterintuitive, but that's like exactly what the, what, what the research shows. I was going to ask you, you know, how best these migrants can be integrated into their communities. You're saying the more, the more careful that integration is, the more, um, I suppose, the more they're immersed in their communities, the better. Well, I think that's right, and and I think it's a it's a mistake to assume that everyone in a community is uniformly hostile. I mean, take for example a um, a shopkeeper uh, from another country who's who's, who's running a business. Um, and uh, is offering uh, basic goods, supplies, at a, at a, at a, at a reasonable price. Um, and um, these, these individuals um, can easily get um, targeted and, uh, and, and hounded out uh, of, of these communities. It seems like a, a ludicrous question, but I'll ask it anyway. Can attacks on foreigners be prevented? Well, just to pick up the point I was, I was, I was gesturing at in the last question, the point is that um, not everyone in the community is equally hostile. So uh, the consumer, the poor food insecure uh, household, um, is, uh, is, is, is quite favorably disposed. And so you'll get examples, and we do have examples of this in some communities, of Somalis being condemned by certain groups, and I'm using Somalis in a sort of general sense, um, whereas consumers are saying, you know, we want them. They give us cheaper, cheaper food, cheaper basic uh, foodstuffs. Yeah. They often complain that police don't do enough to protect them. Do they have a point? Well, if you look at the, uh, at the statistics around attacks, robberies, thefts, um, murders, uh, they probably do uh, have a point. 
There is this debate about whether it's pure criminality, which tends to be the government position, or whether there, there's other factors at play. Um, and sometimes it's quite hard to disentangle because in the midst of an attack that might appear to be robbery, you, you'll get someone who's told to go home because they're a query query. Well, that sounds a bit more xenophobic than, than criminal. So these things do get very much mixed up and entangled with each other. Generally, generally, does South Africa remain a safe haven for migrant workers and refugees from, from across Africa? No, I would say it's one of the least stable havens. Um, I think it's, uh, it's a difficult place to be a foreign national. Um, foreign nationals who come here are treated very differently from South Africans who go to other African countries uh, who are generally welcomed. South African businesses are investing all over the continent. But if you get someone from another country coming here to do business, uh, they immediately face a whole set of obstacles and problems. Mm. Professor Jonathan Crush.